you ever felt guilty about something? Do you ever wonder if you should or shouldn't? There are psychologists out there who tell us that guilt is just a made-up feeling, that really we have no reason to feel guilty. The thing that kills me is, I bet if you walked up to him and punched him right in the face, he would think that you should feel bad about that. Or if you walked around his office and started breaking everything in there, <clears throat> again, he would think that you should feel bad about that. Or anything else. It's amazing. We can, in theory, say all these cute little things that are as stupid as can be. But in practice, we know that there are reasons to feel guilty. But we also know that times in our lives that there is a bit of a false guilt. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what is guilt? True guilt versus false guilt. And what do we do about each of them? So what is false guilt? False guilt is being manipulated by the devil, others, or yourself. See, three things here. You can be manipulated by the devil to feel guilty about something you've not done. By others. By yourself, even. To feel bad about not meeting everyone else's standards. Feeling guilty about not always giving others their way. You know, people will do this to you. It's called manipulation. I guarantee you have people in your life who manipulate you. I can't believe you're not coming over to see your mother. You know it's Mother's Day. I just can't believe you're not coming. Ooh. Is it working? I mean, I mean, that kind of an idea of, you know, I'm just going to lay it on thick because I want to. And then you start feeling guilty. Are you doing anything wrong? No, you got work, you're busy, you've got 100,000 responsibilities, you were just down there, and you just can't do it. But when they sit there and they just lay that on, then you start feeling terrible. That's false guilt. This is false guilt. How can I manage false guilt? I think the biggest thing you can do to manage false guilt is recognize the freedom you have in Christ. When you start to recognize the freedom that you have in Christ, it, it, it starts opening up all kinds of things. Everything is permissible. But not everything's beneficial. I mean, I don't need to do this. It's going to hurt me, someone else. It's going to dishonor God. But it's amazing how much of life that opens up. How much freedom you're given. Another possible source, though, of our false guilt is our own conscience. The Bible talks about 1 Corinthians 8. Believers that have a weak conscience. And it defines it as a mistaken belief that something that is innocent is actually sinful. For instance, I use personal one. I have a weak conscience when it comes to alcohol. I totally abstain from it. I don't like being around it. And what's amazing is my brothers who are stronger in that area will cater to me in that. They may have complete freedom in it, but while I'm around knowing that I struggle with this, they will just make sure that they don't have any. So in their freedom, they show some kindness. To me. The same as I do in other areas of things where I feel completely free about but really bothers other people. That weak conscience then can make us feel like we've done something wrong, which is really just a false guilt again. And we start getting so laid up by our own rules and regulations that instead of being concerned about where we have true guilt, we're always winded over backwards on this false guilt. The biggest thing though that I think leads to false guilt is being a people pleaser. If you want to always try to please everybody else and make them happy, I guarantee you will run into a lot of people that let you. They will let you give your whole life to just try to satisfy them. And what you'll see is, sometimes they'll even let you see that you've done it. And they'll reward you for it. And you'll say, oh, I love that feeling. And so you'll just keep spending your life doing that. And they'll always expect more and more and more. You'll never be able to live up to it. And it's sad, and it's a wrong way to go, and you're hurting both yourself and them. And they're hurting you and themselves. It's no good. You have to start finding that there is a God you need to please. So what's true guilt? True guilt is the feeling of conviction of wicked thoughts, motives, or actions to which the Holy Spirit of God opens your eyes. The cure for true guilt is not just a commitment to try harder. Getting rid of true guilt requires godly sorrow leading to repentance. And once the sin has been repented of, the result is rejoicing in the grace of God. So when you've done something wrong, when you've hurt somebody, when you've dishonored God, when you've done things or thought things or said things that you shouldn't have, 
you're going to feel guilty for it. That is not an inappropriate feeling. It is a right feeling. It is a warning to you to stop behaving like that. Because like we said before, lust leads to sin and sin leads to death. We don't want to run in that kind of a pattern. So this is sort of your warning. It's just like pain in the physical realm of knowing if I just didn't feel pain and put my hand on the burner of a stove that was on and didn't feel pain, it would eat my hand away if I didn't know. The pain makes me jerk it back and keep myself safe as badly as it hurts. It's good for me. So what are true two responses to true guilt? One of them is worldly sorrow. And the other one is godly sorrow. Worldly sorrow will make you cry a lot. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry you're mad. I'm so sorry. But what will we do? Well, we'll just go right back and do it as soon as we can. And we might wait a while because the consequences were bad. But really, we'll run back to it like a pig to its slop. Why? Because we haven't been changed on the inside. What's godly sorrow? Godly sorrow is it leads to repentance. It changes us. It makes us confess our sins. And there may still be tears, or there may not, depending on your personality and how bad it was. But you'll say, you know, I don't need to do this again. And maybe it won't stop tomorrow. But you start seeing improvement, doing it less and less and less over time. To the point where maybe you're not doing it at all after a while. One thing I want to finish with that's a little on the side is this. Because I know some people struggle with this, this false guilt thing again. How do I overcome feelings of guilt from my past? They say, but it's true guilt. You don't know what I did. But it's false guilt now. Because the Bible says this, There is, therefore now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You're not condemned. Jesus said, I did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. Jesus came to save the world, not to condemn the world. If you are in Christ, the things you did long ago, that you've already confessed and put under the blood, they're gone. God says, I put it as far as the east is from the west. I throw it into the sea of forgetfulness. I don't care. I'm not digging it up, and I don't want you to either. You say, so what do you do? Accept that. Stop digging up the problems from years ago. You say, well, I never confessed it. Well, then confess it and be done with it. Confess it and turn for it. Well, I still fall into it. Then just keep working on it. The trying harder, though, is not going to get you there. You're going to have to find what God wants you to do and start working toward that. If all I kept saying was, don't think of pink elephants, and I just kept saying that to you, what would you sooner or later just be thinking about all the time? Pink elephants. No matter how much I said, don't think of pink elephants. Oh, I'm not going to think of pink elephants. Every time you say that, what are you thinking of? Pink elephants. So what do you do? You find something better to think on. The Bible says, think on these things. Things that are noble. Things that are pure. Things that are good. Things that are of a good report. Things that are lovely. Think on these things. What's amazing is as you think on those, it's going to clean you up from the inside out. And the ugly is going to be pushed out. If all you do is think about not thinking about the ugly, all you'll think about is the ugly. Think about beautiful things. And God will make you beautiful from the inside out. Heavenly Father, I pray that when we have true guilt, we'll have true godly sorrow. Repentance and a change. God, I pray that where there's false guilt and people and the devil and ourselves, we lay that on us all the time. That we'll overcome it and find the freedom we have in Jesus Christ. It's in his name that I pray. Amen. Join us next week as we continue this theme. I'm so glad I've had you with me. I hope it's been a big encouragement to you. Let me know if it has. See you later. Bring your tired and bring your shame. Bring your guilt and bring your pain. Don't you know that's not your name? You will always be much more to me And every day I wrestle with the voices that keep telling me I'm not right But that's alright Cause I
Bring your doubts, bring your fears, bring your hurt, and bring your tears. There'll be no condemnation here. You are holy, righteous, and redeemed. And every time I fall, there'll be those who will call me a mistake. Well, that's okay, cause I hear. 